guys through here welcome to the channel on this channel we make videos around technology tips career advice and inspiration helping you elevate your career earn more money so you can live a better life in today's video we're going to be doing a demo about an amazing product gpt3 from OpenAI. i was very fortunate to get early preview into the product into the beta phase of it and i spent some time today and last night playing with it and I can tell you, I almost cried. I literally almost cried. And I'm not hyping this up. Uh, seeing this product and what it can mean for technology, what it can mean for content, and where this is going to go. You know, just imagine two, three, four, five years from now. This just blew my mind away. And I haven't seen anything like this. As a tech professional, I've been doing technology for many years. I've just... I've never, I've never seen anything like this, being able to have this amount of power in one's hands with technology. And once I got access to this, I played with it. I'm going to show you guys what I saw, but don't just look at what I saw. Think about what is possible. Think about what this means. Think about the fact that this is just a beta. This is just like version 3.0 and we haven't even gotten into version 10 or version 100, what this will all mean for the field of technology, open AI GPT-3. Now, if you don't know what GPT-3 is, you can look at it in the description below. I've made a video about that. So we're going to dive right in. Now, just to give us a background, GPT-3 is the next version of the language model coming from this organization called open AI. Now, if you go into, and I think we can actually go onto the website here, let's do this open AI search for open AI you can go ahead and read what open AI is all about all right and it's very famous they have Elon Musk on their board this this team is basically developing AI models and th there's the open piece of it but I think they're trying to monetize this so depending on what you're trying to do or when you're trying to use this uh, it might be free or might not be free so bottom line is they do have a, a couple of projects here that they they work on the one that really caught my attention i've been paying close attention to is this gpt3 which is a language model you can go ahead and read there is some uh, technical papers around this it was released uh, last year it's a very very fascinating uh, uh project that these folks are working on and then you can go into apis they've exposed this as APIs in the beta version and the beta version is what I have. And that's what I'm going to be walking through here today. So it's so, I mean, it's so powerful. I don't even know where to start because the very first thing is if you have done AI before, you can imagine how tedious it is to build AI models, to train AI models, to deploy them to production, to manage them in production. It's a pain. And there are people who need PhDs, right, to do to build all of this. But what OpenAI is doing is really democratizing that power to, you know, many different people. And we're gonna see it here uh, uh, as we go through this demonstration. And I'm gonna give you a good case in point. So there are a couple of things you can do with OpenAI. And one here is to summarize text. So you can take a text, a bunch of text that you want, you send it through this OpenAI. And it's going to summarize and synthesize that for you into a short blob. And it's all using AI behind the scenes. So here's an example. You can send in this text, lots of text, and it gives you a one line summary of it. Now it's using some massive model trained on, I think it's about a hundred million or hundred billion points. I'm not quite sure, but it's huge. It's massive. And I heard it costs about 15 million just to train this model, but it's, it's really impressive. I Like I said, I almost cried uh, watching this as a tech professional. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. Why I really feel this anxious or this excited about it. So there is classification. Let's go back up. Uh, summarization. There is uh, content uh, classification. So you can look at the tweet, for example, and you want to do kind of sentiment analysis to say, is this tweet positive or was this tweet uh, negative people want to know this right especially for businesses you're looking at tweets you're doing all this sentiment analysis and the old way of doing this when I literally started in this field of Hadoop and NLP, uh, NLP natural language processing it was tedious to do this and expensive and not always as effective 
but what you're gonna see here is just something that will blow your mind so that is classification next one that we see here is explore more topics they have a quite a bit of topics uh, that you can explore uh, for doing language translation and a whole bunch of things that you can do now let's dive into some actual uh, examples so let's go into some examples here i'm going to show you some examples then i'm going to go into a playground to show you why i think this is a game changer so take for example if you come here let's take um let's pick one of this um a chat okay and what it does here is it does show you the code which you can copy i'm a python guy i love python and then you can choose your language uh, copy that code throw that into pycharm and you can work with it and or you can come in here and then open this in the playground they call it the play playground better playground so in here uh, once you come in into this better playground what it, it gives me here is just some examples right and i'm gonna walk through the screen what i see and what i'm kind of thinking in my head now if i come in here you can read what the text here says on the screen right and i haven't done anything i'm literally just clicking around uh, uh as well so let's take a look at this the following is a conversation with an ai assistant would be helpful all right so basically this is kind of simulating a conversation with an ai right and you can probably post questions and the ai is going to give you a response okay so guys this is where i go blank because now i'm going to be talking to an ai i don't know what to say and let me ask that's the most clever thing i could i could come up with what did you have a dinner today because everyone at some point is going to have dinner i don't know if ais have dinners but it has something to say that's the ai writing okay you can read what it said on the screen uh, an ai might not always respond to questions <laughs> uh chicken alfredo guys this is this is this is insane this is insane now imagine having these apis in your hand and integrating this with your own application it's beyond cool let's try this let me post a question i think could be interesting let's try that all right well it was pretty straightforward with that one so cameroon is a country in west africa so it was kind of interesting that it, it got that one very um very interesting let, let me give one more and then i think we'll be done with this let's let's see without a question mark if that makes a difference oh okay so sometimes and this is what you'll notice with some of these uh, ai models is that it, it did attempt to give an answer but i recommend you read it didn't quite finish it so just something you might kind of notice as you play around with the platform but this is still nonetheless powerful just imagine trying to do this by yourself it, it would almost be impossible so being able to take advantage of this from open ai i think is really a game changer uh for us uh, now the next things that i'm going to do is i'm going to go back into let me close this i'm going to go into an open playground and i'm going to talk about why i think that this is so fascinating and the reason why i got interested in this is actually for some selfish reasons and you guys might see that so one of the things that i've been doing is of course i create content here on youtube um, and it can be very challenging to create content and what I realized is that creating content, there's really not a lot of value at you doing because you basically just taking text that a lot of people have probably put or something that you know, and you summarize it. There's very little original stuff coming out from just, you know, putting out content. Now, the way you deliver it might be more interesting, but fundamentally, people who create content, either by blogs or, or, or websites or books, it's just taking a bunch of knowledge and then synthesizing it for people to understand. Now, I'm not talking about original thought. I'm just talking about your typical 10 reasons why you should eat food or 10 things why you should do that. So that kind of task is something that is really amazing for AIs to do. And that's what we're going to see here. On my uh, blog, this is one of the things that I've been you know, spending some time really trying to elevate and, and putting some effort. I haven't spent as much time as I really wanted to, but it's just kind of something I've been kind of looking at too. 
get the blog up and going. So let's take, for example, here, uh, this uh, post you can see here on my blog here, which is 10 quantum computing thought leaders you need to follow. And this, this is really the vision I have for this blog. And I kind of want you guys to give me your feedback. So what I plan to do here is take a topic and then give you 10 things about that topic that is relevant for you to know. Okay, so for example, I am interested in AI, of course. I'm also interested in quantum computing and cloud computing, in databases. There are a lot of things that I'm kind of interested in. And I want to have all these facts and information available in my blog post, in my content for you guys to be aware of. So going back and looking at this article, it actually takes me... Well, by the way, I have to say this, a, a majority of this article, by the way, was written by OpenAI. I, this is where I was playing around with it and wrote a majority of this using OpenAI. And that's where the light bulb just went into my head to say, guys, just writing an article is such a mundane task, especially if you're not really doing any creative, you know, putting any new spin to the content. A majority of what you're going to be doing is just putting words and sentences and following syntax and grammar along with a bunch of other facts together. And, you know, if it takes me maybe two hours to write this content myself or to pay hire and pay somebody for them to write it for me, that could get really expensive really quickly. Now, being able to let AI do this for me was so fascinating. I'm like, wow. What does this mean for all the content we read, all the, uh, the writers out there, all the people who make a living in this knowledge content-based economy? What is that really going to mean for them when AI can do all of that for us even more effectively? Writing this post, I think it took me, and I'm going to go through it here in a second. It took me about not up to 15 minutes. And that 15 minutes was me just trying to play with open AI and then copy and paste what they were giving me in a chronological fashion to come up with a post. And I, I think it probably did a better job than if I sat there trying to write this all by myself. So this introduction, OpenAI gave that to me. I figured out what these people were. And then this uh, conclusion, OpenAI gave that to me. And now you got a, a, a good uh, content show, showing up on my website for someone to consume. And it's really uh, part of AI doing it. now. I did some copy and pasting, but I can guarantee you that with a little bit of Python wizardry in uh, interacting with my website, I can automate all of this. I don't need to be copying and pasting. I can just call their API, format that, and push it over to the back end of the blog, and voila, publishing a blog every morning with like a Jitter AI without me having to write any single content. And then all I can do is take this content and then come on camera and talk to you guys about it, all right? I'm planning to do a video about 10 quantum computing thought leaders you need to follow. The content is already there. All I need to do is just come online and deliver it. How amazing is that for a content creator like myself or just for the future? This is why this is uh, very interesting. So I do have quite a bit of content. So pay attention to, to this blog. I'm going to put a, a place here for people to subscribe. I think I'm hoping to do that. And where I really see this going is... I might write some content, but if everything falls into, play, into place the way I'm thinking, then the majority of the content here would be automated and, and run by AI. Now, I still need to come up with the topics and some interesting ideas to fit the AI on what I want it to be, because I don't want this blog for it to be talking about music, if I really don't care about music. I care about technology tips, career advice, and inspiration. And if I can use AI to give you guys that information through this blog, that would be where the focus would be. So stay tuned to that. Now, going back to the playground, I want to show you guys something that's really interesting. Um, one of the capabilities that this open AI does is you can put in your prompts. So one of the prompts I did here was called topic details. So for example, I select that prompt. I want to have a top, uh, an article that says, and I did this just before the recording, that way I'm going to talk about the top 10 technology companies in the United States. So basically, you're starting with a couple of prompts and the open AI can then finish it for you. So here I prompted it or I seeded it with Microsoft, Apple, and then Nintendo. If you run this, let's see, it should just write about Nintendo for us and maybe even pick another topic for us to start writing about. 
this is if this isn't magic i don't know what is right now it's written about nintendo is going to uh, uh neck uh, nippon electric company and it can just keep going on and on all i gotta do now is just stay this in the direction of what i want and i got full flesh content available for me to use guys this is really impressive and i'm just doing baby stuff here what i'm doing here is just even child's play there is another video that i've made of people using this to write code people using this to develop you know entire entire applications like you can write and say i want an application in node.js or in html and this develops the application for you or people can say i want a sql query and this writes it for you so what i'm doing here is just even child's play now let's go into something that i came across that i thought was very interesting again going back to this idea of using this for creating content uh for my blog so if you check take a look here i had this article about 10 open uh, G, uh gpt3 demos and examples to convince you that ai is real so again i didn't write a lot here but if i really wanted to i can have open ai or gpt3 give me a better summary than what i had uh written in there so uh these are kind of the, this is maybe a topic that i want so let's go back to the playground and let's do something that is really interesting so let's say i want um i want a blog post and we're doing this live here let's say i want a blog post about um github about github and i'm just picking up github here because i think i saw a blog post somewhere about github uh, i should have an article somewhere about github maybe maybe not all right i don't think i see it but let's just do github as, as a tech professional i want a content about github i want to make a video about github i want a blog post about github where do i start this is kind of what you you face when you're trying to create content i need 10 things about github let's see how we can do this so let's go back here and they do have different engines so ada is the very first one and i think they were using uh, ada is um one of the pioneers of computers and then you had charles uh, charles uh, babish and then of course my uh, uh, curry and then now they have uh, davinci so davinci is the gpt3 uh version that's what they call the engine with uh, davinci or davinci um and this is what we've been using but they also have this davinci uh, instruct which is a better version i came across it as i was playing with with this so what the davinci instruct does is instead of you just giving a prompt and it writes you can actually tell it and instruct it on what to do so let's instruct it to write us an article with 10 points about github that we should care about all right let's see how well it does So I think I could do a better job at uh, at phrasing that question. And we might maybe have to play with it a little bit here. So we're using DaVinci Instruct here. So instead of just going with the traditional DaVinci, we're asking it, we're instructing it what to do. All right. And then this is a title with the title, 10 things about GitHub. And just the complexity here is it's, it's, it's kind of subtle, but there's, there's a lot of complexity here because now I'm telling it what to do. I'm putting it in quotation marks to tell it exactly that this is what you need to do. It might not be so obvious to the machine, but we see if we can, it can pull it off. Before I run that, you can control the response length that you get. And then the temperature here is kind of the randomness. So the, the, the lower you, you go from, for the temperature, the less random it is. The higher you go, the more random your results are. I've kind of played with that a little bit. And then there are some more uh, uh, knobs and dials you can use here to you know, figure out the, re the results that you get on the left side. So we're talking about this side of the screen, this side of the screen. So there's more knobs and dials here. So let's go back and then run this query and, and see what happens. So 10 things about GitHub you should know. Oh, it stopped. So it starts really well. I think I'm liking that. Let's let's keep going. Oh, 
okay so it's kind of really listing the things out so you can see uh let's see if it finishes now all right so it's uh it's finished right so it didn't format it the way i wanted to but it gives me as a writer or as a content creator it, it does give me a lot just imagine the amount of research you'll be doing on google and wikipedia and all of that to figure this out but open ai has just given this to me for free and all i have to do is take this maybe format it a little bit clean it up a little bit and voila i got the content 10 things about github you need to know all right first one github provides a code review system for high touch code review blah 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 right next one it offers private repositories for enterprises next one it was acquired by microsoft in 2018 did you know that maybe you didn't now you know and i can put this on my blog i didn't write this content open ai has done this for me and this is why i when i saw this i literally almost cried write an article uh, let's try a different format here. I almost cried, guys. Let's see if it... Let's see if it... Uh, even just formatting a little bit, you can see that it's smart enough to even give me the numbers. 10 things about GitHub's you should know. All right. and that's the end of it that's the end of what the question is all right that's what that's the end of what the question is guys this is this is powerful this is uh it's powerful and we can keep going i think that uh uh let's try one more thing here so So write an article about quantum computing, let's spell that correctly, with five paragraphs. Hmm. Guys, I'm not even going to finish this, but you get the point. You get the point. All right write an article about whatever and this thing is off and it's running and it's writing about quantum computing and all i gotta do is uh is to take a look so really powerful really powerful now once you have a model like this in your playground you can actually go ahead and save the model or share share it as a preset so if you see here i have a preset uh, that was after you know training because you might have to train or depending on what you're trying to do uh, you might have to play around with, around with this a little bit and then once you've got something that is really interesting you can save it you can share it you can export the code and let's actually take the code uh, you can export export the code if you have your api key then just bring this into python import that open ai um, uh, or just go into like uh, depending on what you use for your package manager uh, import open ai and voila you can run this in in python so imagine you have a list of topics you just put this in a for loop call the api get the results format it push it to your back end system you know wordpress whatever it is you use and voila there you go with a, with an amazing uh, blog or with an amazing content i don't even want to go into um let's see let's try this <laughs> I said, say, how are you in French? And je ne sais pas. No, I don't think je ne sais pas is, is, is correct. It's not quite correct. Um, how are you should be, maybe if I formatted it this way, how are you should not be je ne sais pas. Je ne sais pas it would be more of, I don't know. Uh, how are you should be. Comment ça va? All right. So let's clean this back up and then run this more. Guys, I'm just having so much fun. Je veux bien et toi. <laughs> now it's answering. It's going to conversational mode. So it's thinking that I said, how are you? And now it's responding that I'm doing well and you. But that's not what I meant. I meant, 
say how are you in French. That's what I actually meant. I didn't mean actually how are you. But you can get how versatile this thing is, right? This is one model that has been trained for so many use cases that, you know, in the previous, in the, you know, just a couple of months back, you had models that were dedicated for language translation. You had models that were dedicated for text summarization. You had models that were dedicated for, for keyword extraction. You had models that were dedicated for, you know, uh, sentiment analysis. You had models dedicated for just, you know, text generation, right? Synthetic text generation and all of that. Here, we got this massive, holistic, do-it-all GPT-3 model that can almost do everything under the sun. That is amazing. And I'm so thankful. And before we close this up here, I'm thankful for uh, the GPT-3 team. Uh, I did reach out to them when I came across this and uh, sent an email directly to an individual and within uh, 24 hours i got my access i got the response to this so uh, i'm really ha happy and grateful for the team for giving me that access to you know play with this and make this video that uh, you guys are watching i think that was really great i could imagine the amount of effort that has gone into this so thank for thanks uh thanks to the gpt3 team the open ai team uh for providing this uh, link for me to uh, try it out now if you have any questions and you want to try this out yourself or you want me to make videos and take certain angles about this platform and show you guys i would be more than happy to do i certainly can uh, do that and dive a little bit more deeper uh, into it now what i plan to do like i said earlier is to build on this blog and really take advantage of this to populate and get, get more content for this blog. I think it's gonna make the workflow for me a lot easier. There are other projects that I kind of have in mind. I'm not gonna talk about them yet, just yet that I see this doing, you know, business ideas and things like that. But I think it's still early, it's still early. But what I see as a quick win is just getting content for this blog um, and then using that to, uh, to fit my, let's go to YouTube here. Uh oh, using that to fit my uh, YouTube channel. Bear with me, guys. Using that to fit my YouTube channel. So if you, if you haven't subscribed, go out, check out Tech with Fruit. Subscribe, share this with somebody that might get value out of it. We make technology tips like this. We find great and interesting and exciting content. Uh, to share it with you guys. GPT-3 is one of those frontiers. If you're not paying attention to this, I cannot understate this. If you are not paying attention to this and you work in technology and you are a tech professional, guys, you are missing something. You are missing something huge and massive. This is not only coming for people who are writers or content creators. This could be coming for your job. Are you a marketer? Are you uh, a programmer? Are you a clerk? Are you a doctor? Are you a nurse? Are you uh, an accountant, a lawyer that you got to read some material and make sense out of it? This machine, this brain that we see, we need to start calling it a brain. This GPT brain, it's getting smarter and smarter. And it's going to get to some point where if your job is to wake up and write SQL every day, you might not have a job anytime soon because this thing might take your job. And so what are you doing to prepare for that next thing? Okay. And maybe your job could be to be the GPT-3 expert because now you can use this instead of writing SQL, tell it what SQL to write. There would always be need for humans. But the question is, what is the human being used for? For a blog, there will always be a need for blogs and the idea around the context of the blog and what the scope is. But do I actually need to sit down and be putting words and sentences together if a machine can do that even better? That is the, the, the reality that we face. So guys, hopefully this gives you some ideas. I'll bring this back. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. I'm going to leave a link to some of these topics below. Watch out for more videos like this coming. Quick demos, quick tutorials. I'm definitely going to be doing uh, a lot more of this on interesting things that I see. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I'll see what I can do. And if you need help, like I said, getting access to open AI, shoot me an email, shoot me a comment. Uh, I'll definitely give you pointers of what exactly I did uh, for them to give me access that quickly. Um, it's, I'm using the free version now, but I'm sure at some point it's not going to be free. So um, I would uh, cross that hill once I, once I get there. But for now, I'm going to keep playing around with the free version 
and then see what is possible. Again, thanks for watching, guys. This is Fru. I appreciate you joining us. I'll see you in the next presentation. Thank <laughs> you.